Hello friends, I am back and ready to help you accomplish all of your Preptober dreams. Today, we're focusing on developing your initial story concept. So for those of you who are not new to the channel, you may be wondering where on earth I have been. Well, I am going to tell you that, but I'm going to save that housekeeping to the end of the video so we can actually get into what you are here for, which is story development during Preptober. If you are new here, hello, welcome. A little bit about me. My name is Holly. I started this channel in 2020, which was my first year doing NaNoWriMo. Um, the videos were pretty basic as I was learning. In 2021, I had a lot more to share, and now in 2022, I feel that my knowledge has only grown. That, and this year, I am officially a NaNoWriMo Municipal Liaison. So my process now is going to be a little bit different, and hopefully I can provide some insight from that perspective. Now without further ado, let's get into our first Preptober video of 2022. Let's assume from the get-go that you know what NaNoWriMo or National Novel Writing Month is. Preptober is the month that comes before it, obviously, and consists of preparing yourself for the daunting task of writing 50,000 words in 30 days. While November, of course, involves a lot of commitment, one could argue that October is the more important aspect of NaNoWriMo to get right, since you're laying all your groundwork here. So to give you the best possible start we can, today we're just gonna start by looking at that first spark of story concept. I've said it before, and I will probably say it again, not every story concept was birthed from a eureka moment in the middle of the night when an author jolts out of bed and runs feverishly to their notebook to write down the award-winning story starter from the dream or, or nightmare that they had. Funny enough, I was just talking to my partner about how most of those ideas, when you really analyze them in the light of day, they're not so great. <laughs> so how are you going to start your story if you are not gifted one from on high? Well, you're going to do a bit of legwork with these four starters that I, along with NaNoWriMo, have prepared for you. If you're a visual artist as well as a literary one as I am, then you know that a lot of artists get their start from tracing. Hell, some commercial artists never stop. You can do something similar to this with writing. Try picking out three of your favorite novels, movies, comics, TV series, and write down the short synopsis for each. For example, Narnia, the land beyond the wardrobe door, a secret place frozen in eternal winter, a magical country waiting to be set free. Lucy is the first to find the secret wardrobe in the professor's mysterious old house. At first, her brothers and sister don't believe her when she tells of her visit to the land of Narnia. But soon, Edmund, then Peter, and Susan step through the wardrobe themselves. In Narnia, they find a country buried under the evil enchantment of the White Witch. When they meet the lion Aslan, they realize they've been called to a great adventure and bravely join the battle to free Narnia from the witch's sinister spell. So once you've got this down, you're going to pick apart aspects of the story and change them. An adjusted version of this plot could be something along the lines of Kira, Althea, and Jacob are living out ordinary lives until they find themselves drawn into the warring world of Sintera. Suddenly, the concerns of finding an ordinary job, sorting out their romantic relationships, and settling on a university major seem very small. Sintera is a world the trio could only dream of in their wildest fantasies, and now it's their job to defend it. So just an FYI, this is a blurb for a novel I recently finished during Camp Rimo, so it is mine. And while I wasn't inspired quite so consciously by the Narnia series, I'll be the first to admit how much I loved reading C.S. Lewis, and still do. So I'm sure it was in there somewhere when Sintera popped into my head. But moving along, borrowing from a large plot can seem complex and set off the theft alarms in your head, whether that's really the case or not. After all, great poets imitate and improve, whereas small ones steal and spoil. 
If borrowing from an entire plot doesn't really do it for you, let's aim at one character. In this thought exercise, you don't have to work with a fictional character. You can work with someone real. But I'd recommend not thinking on someone you already know too much about. Aim for the long-lost friend from sixth grade, the teacher who mysteriously had to leave early every day, or maybe a face on a billboard. Recently on my channel, I've spoken about my Uncle Randy, who we lost unexpectedly. He was someone who lived a very divided life. He divided groups of friends, he divided family. Every social circle he explored knew a different Randy. Where I was concerned, I learned more about him after his passing than I knew when he was alive. This type of mystery twigs my imagination like nothing else. So what you want to do is find a potential character who does this for you. What's their history, their hopes, their dreams, their obstacles, and their greatest triumphs? I'm willing to bet that once you start thinking on those questions alone, you'll have a story in mind. Just don't get too drawn into the reality of the situation. We're inventing someone here, not fact-finding. Sometimes the most interesting news is small news. With bigger stories, the investigation is latched onto by so many reporters in the professional and amateur realm that with the internet at your fingertips, you're bound to find everything out about everyone involved right down to their shoe size. But what about the smaller stories? The feel-good ones, or the small and sad yet never explored ones? A flood tears through a town. We hear about the financial loss, but the local interest tales are fleeting. A hometown hero pulls people from the watery roads and tells his tale of glory on the local six o'clock news. But where did he come from? Where is he headed? What random small news stories have you seen that stuck with you in some way? What kind of people might be involved in them? What are their lives like? How did they end up in that situation? What might have happened years before? Or what might happen years to come because of the event? While it can be tempting, especially for fantasy authors, to tackle a tale that defines a generation, or at least, you know, hopefully does, <laughs> there truly is something to be said about the day-to-day, -day, about the timid tales. Small stories can be quite big if you allow them to be. Last but not least, I'm going to give you a visual exercise. Take a look at the images that I'm going to put up on the screen now. Pick one and meditate on it. What kind of place is it? How did it get this way? Who might live or travel through it? How do they feel? What's it like for them there? What challenges do they face? Sometimes a picture really can be worth a thousand or maybe even 50,000 words. Well, I hope that that gives you a launch pad from which to start your story. If it did help, please let me know in the comments down below. Now for that little bit of housekeeping. First, Thank you so much for helping me to hit 500 subscribers. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you, and I'm sorry that I've been away. I think my reasons are relatively decent. I've been off the past month-ish due to a move and loss of computer. The move went well, thank you for asking. And I'm still in Montreal, just a little bit closer to the mountain now, but more importantly, closer to the graveyard. I still do not have a new computer tower, but it will be coming along soon. Until then, my editing process is painful. My filming process is also painful. So forgive any errors. If things don't look as good as they usually do, I'm really, really limited right now. Like this isn't my final set in the new place. It's just the best space I have at the moment. Um, but I'm back doing this because Preptober and NaNoWriMo are incredibly important to me, as is helping you through those months. Unfortunately, until I have my new computer, I won't be able to do my video live streams on YouTube, but I will still be running sprints on Discord. In fact, we just had ones on uh, Tuesday and Thursday this past week and the one before that. 
So be sure to join via the link in the description down below. It's a great little community. I think we're at like over 50 people now. So come and check it out. It's a, it's a really nice place to be if I, if I do say so myself. With that, thank you so much for stopping by. Apologies if you hear a ton of construction. Apologies for everything. <laughs> if you've been here a while, thank you for sticking around. And if you're new, welcome. I hope you do stay. My videos do get better than this. <laughs> As always, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you actually get notified when I post a new video. And last but not least, I hope that you are having a day that is just as wonderful as you are. Bye. Thank you.